welcome to Max and Ben Talk Hockey. And today we will be interviewing WHL forward Logan Stankoven of the Kamloops Blazers. Logan, how are you? I'm doing good, thanks. Thanks for having me on. Yep, awesome. Um, so I'm just going to get started right away. Um, and so you're originally from Kamloops and you play – your junior hockey in Kamloops. So what is it? So how does it feel to be playing for your hometown team and scoring for every, for just people that you grew up knowing and just playing some hockey with? Yeah, I'm pretty fortunate just to, you know, be able to play junior hockey in my hometown. And, um, you know, when the WHL draft happened, uh, there's a few teams that, uh, were uh, willing to kind of let me slip to, to number five where the Blazers were selecting and uh, I was lucky enough for them to draft me and um, I think just the whole experience of getting to play in front of friends and family each night and um, you know we've got some great fans here in Kamloops so it's uh, it's been quite the experience and uh, nothing but uh, a positive for me and my family. Yeah, totally Max. Yeah. So, I mean, as a gold medalist, uh, second round pick in the NHL draft and a fifth overall pick in the WHL draft, have you had to say what, what would your greatest accomplishment be? What would you say is yours? Um, I'd probably say getting drafted for sure. Um, I've won, you know, a lot of tournaments over the years and stuff growing up as a kid, and uh, obviously that's great. Uh, I guess the U18 World Championships has been up there, and uh, getting to play in the World Juniors last Christmas was pretty cool before it all got canceled, but uh, – you know, for, for an individual myself, I'd probably say uh, being drafted was a pretty special moment for me. Yeah, I mean, as a 19-year-old, you've had a lot uh, so far, so. Yeah, I know it's, uh, it's been good. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, and you were, I believe, top three in WHL scoring this year. And what would you think was the key to your success this year to score 104 points? Um, I'd probably just say the combination of, uh, my work ethic and, uh, I guess my off season training. Um, I put a lot of work on work in, I guess, over the, over the summer and, uh, in the gym and on the ice and stuff, just trying to better myself as a player. So, um, I guess the combination of that and, uh, you know, we had a really good team this year and I had some good line mates to play with. So, um, you know, I think it was just, uh, kind of a mix of everything that, uh, you know, led me in the right direction. Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. Uh, being a little bit of an undersized forward, uh, how are you still able to beat like, you know, six two, six three defensemen? And do you find that an advantage in today's game or, uh, you know, how do you battle with that? Um, yeah, I mean, it's obviously not something you want uh, being a smaller guy. It's, uh, it's, it's something you can't control. I mean, size, uh, you know, you're born, uh, a certain size and you grow to a certain size, there's nothing you can really do about it. So uh, for me, you just got to deal with, uh, with what you can control and, um, you know, become the best player you can be. So um, for me, I don't really worry, worry about size too much. It's just about, uh, you know, how hard you compete and uh, you know, how much you can put the puck in the net. So. Absolutely. Yeah, totally. Um, and uh, we all know that in Canada, you could either play major junior or junior A. And a lot of top tier players do uh, decide to go play junior A and have the opportunity to play NCAA D1. So what was the thought process in not going that route and sticking to play in the WHL? Um, I guess right before the draft there, the WHL draft, um, you know, I think I was kind of 50-50 at the time, just um, you know, uh, I was weighing my options and kind of seeing, you know, uh, was college the right route or, you know, with, uh, with Kamloops kind of being in my range of, of, uh, you know, I guess in the draft selection, it was, it was something that I was kind of leaning on. I mean, uh, if Kamloops didn't draft me, maybe it would be a different story for me. Maybe I went the, the college route and decided to play junior A. So, um, you know, I had a few offers from North Dakota and Denver and, um, I believe there was uh, Michigan as well, the Wolverines. So I had a few offers on the table, but um, at the end of the day with Camps, you know, selecting me at number five there and, you know, for me being able to live at home and play junior hockey, um, you know, for the last three years, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I believe this is the last question before we get into today's main topic. Uh, how was it like representing Camps with a C on your jersey this year? 
Yeah, that was really cool too. Uh, growing up, you know, I, I supported the Blazers lots and went to go watch their games all the time. So, um, you know, I remember guys from, you know, six, seven years ago growing up as a kid. So to, to now wear the C and to um, get for, for kids to look up to me, uh, it's pretty cool. So just try to lead by example and, uh, you know, be respectful on and off the ice. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I guess we'll go into our main topic of the interview, which is uh, the draft um, during the COVID year. So you were drafted in 2021, 47th overall by the Dallas Stars. And obviously scouting was very, very limited. Um, and we could see you only got into six games uh, last season due to COVID. And I mean, in those six games, you had 10 points. But um, how did that work and how could NHL teams try to scout their players or try to scout players with only a limited number of games? Yeah, it was definitely a weird year. Um, I think there was lots of waiting going on for uh, us players just trying to feel out the situation of uh, when when is our league going to start back up or um, I know different leagues started at different times and um, some leagues didn't even start up at all. So, um, I mean, down in the States, the USHL was playing and uh, up in Canada, none of the leagues had started yet. I know the QMJHL played for a bit there, but then, you know, it kind of all got shut down around Christmas. And then um, right after Christmas there, kind of January, February was when, you know, you kind of heard rumblings of the league starting back up again. So that was uh, definitely uh, pretty promising and uh, definitely a big positive for, um, you know, us hockey players and I guess, you know, everybody in this world, right? Because, um, you know, COVID took a big hit on a lot of people and that was pretty detrimental to a lot of businesses and, uh, you know, sports organizations not being able to bring in the revenue. So um, for everything to start back up, it was nice. And um, I only played the six games, like you said. So uh, I did kind of try and uh, showcase myself best as possible and um, make sure that I, I left, a, you know, a uh, I guess a good mark on, um, you know, who I was as a player so that the scouts could have a good idea of, of who I am. Yeah, totally. Max. Yeah. And, you know, in today's game, there's so much scouts to look for. It's definitely much more in depth than it was 20, 30 years ago. So with things like uh, coachability and speed all being like today's top factors in your experience, was there a common theme that teams were looking for in their prospects or was it all kind of like random? I think first and foremost, it's about being a good person. Um, I mean, being respectful on and off the ice. And uh, I think, you know, something that my, my parents have taught me is uh, no matter how good of a player you are in, in any sport, if you're not a good human being, um, you know, uh, it's not going to take you, you know, super far. So um, for me, it's about being a really good person. And then obviously to make it that far, you got to have tons of skill and, and uh, be a super smart and uh, I guess, uh, well-rounded players. So um, for me, I'd say, you know, coachability and being a good human being and a good teammate is, is first and foremost and most important. Yeah, totally. Um, and with the Dallas Stars, did they reach out anyway uh, before they were, or before you were drafted? Um, or did they just announce your name early on in day two and you got the call right after from the GM saying, we're happy to have you on board? Um, yeah, I was kind of shocked by that a bit. Uh, Dallas had only reached out once and it was for a quick like five or 10 minute Zoom call, which is uh, not usually normal because a lot of teams reach out two or maybe even three times if they're super interested. So uh, for Dallas to choose me, um, I was kind of surprised by it a bit, but uh, obviously we're happy. This is a great spot to play and a uh, great organization. We've got some really good players. Yeah, totally. Just... Uh, oh happy to be selected there in that second round because uh, I thought maybe I had a good chance to go in the first there, but uh, obviously I think size played a factor into me dropping a bit. Yeah. Uh, what were some other teams that reached out heavily and you thought uh, might, might be drafting you? Um, LA reached out lots. I know Vegas was interested and um, I think New Jersey and then Seattle. I talked to Seattle, I think, two or three times at least. So um, those were a good handful of teams that were uh, pretty interested and uh, I guess liked me as a player. But uh, I guess they liked me enough to select me. Yeah, I guess. Um, I mean, I'm 
you're I, I guess you'd still be really happy at in Dallas. I mean, it's pretty nice there from what I've heard and it's nice and warm. So Yeah, no, I was happy about that. Great weather. So Yeah, it's it's definitely different from Canada. I think you you, you can say that. Oh yeah, big time. <laughs> a bit bit different climate, I'd say. Yeah, a little bit. Just tornadoes are the one issue, but it yeah. will happen. That's, yeah. It's the one bad thing. But I'm I'm sure you get them a lot in Canada if you live in the farms. So Yeah, uh Max. Yeah, uh, after being drafted, what was kind of like your thought process where was, was it like I got to call my parents or I got to call my buddies? Like what, what was that kind of like for you? Um, well, actually me and my family were kind of all sitting around the TV watching the draft live. Uh, obviously it wasn't in person last year, so, um, kind of had to improvise a bit and watched it in the living room together. And, um, yeah, I mean, once we found out that, uh, actually the, the funny story, the power actually went out of my house right before, <laughs> right before I was drafted. So um it was like midway through the second round power went out we were all freaking out because it's like like if someone phones me or if i get drafted i'm not gonna know so we turned the draft back on and uh right before dallas was about to pick my phone just started buzzing and uh started getting tons of texts and everything and then uh, i kind of knew right away that dallas had selected me got it yeah um and who was like the first person that reached out and then like what what followed and like, what was the process as soon as you got drafted? Yeah. So Jim Nill, the GM of Dallas, uh, phoned me right away and congratulated me on uh, being drafted to their organization. And then, um, uh, yeah, so I think I, I think it was Jim Nill and then also a couple other scouts or development guys had reached out. And then, uh, sorry, what was your other part of the question? Oh, like, were, were there like other players that reached out? Because I know there are some uh players and i know like in the first round of 2019 like dylan cousins just got like a phone call from jack eichel like in the middle of an interview and he had to pick up um yeah. and that was like a big and that was like a funny anecdote that happened in the 2019 draft but did any, did any of that happen to you um no nobody really notable on the team but uh <laughs> for rich peverly who played for boston um, he's one of their development guys now. So, uh, he had phoned me and, uh, sent me a text, just kind of welcoming me, welcoming me to the team and uh, happy that I was part of their organization, but, um, no, uh, no, uh, big name players. So, <laughs> yeah, that, that's all right. I mean, I think from what I remember, Rich Preverly was traded to Boston in the Tyler Sagan deal. So, uh, yeah. that's actually pretty neat. Yeah. Um, it, it brought Tyler Sagan away from Boston uh, and there was that whole Peter Chiarelli thing that went on. I do remember that yeah. where they were criticizing Sagan because I think he was like too skilled or something. It was, it was, it was something ridiculous. But Max is a Bruins fan would know. Yeah. I, I can tell by the flag. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah. They just, they just fired their coach. I saw Bruce. I Cameron. know. Yeah. I was like stuck. I wasn't expecting that at all. Yeah, I, mean, I I I could expect it. They have like one good prospect, and Logan, you would know him. Fabian Lysel, he plays on Vancouver. Oh yeah, yeah, I know Lysel really good. I've played against him a bunch, especially this year. I got to I got to know like how he is as a player, like pretty good. So yeah, is he's, he, a guy, right? he's a tough guy. Pardon me. Is he's a tough guy? Like physically tough. No, just like is he a tough guy to play against? Oh, like, yeah. you know, yeah. skill, quick and he's shifty. And yeah. it's like a really smart player. He's got good hockey sense. So he reads the ice and reads the plays really well. So that makes it hard. But uh, physically tough, he's not like he's not, he's like my size, a little bit bigger. But he's not like super tough. But I mean, yeah. when you feel like that, you don't really need to be a big tough guy. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, as, as we were saying earlier, it's kind of crazy how kind of the things kind of worked out. I mean, people had like Zell top 10. I think you were ranked 13 in that in your draft too. So. It's kind of crazy how people shift like that. Yeah, it is crazy. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting, but uh, I think it just goes to show that uh, it doesn't matter, you know, what team talks to you. At the end of the day, you don't know, like, who's going to draft you up until, you know, you're drafted at that very moment. So, 
Yeah. And were you yeah. able to like, participate in the prospect or training camp? Because I know in Boston they have like uh, Bergeron come speak to the players and stuff. So did you, were you able to go through something like that? Yeah. So main camp was uh, last September. So I went to that for, I was in Dallas for about a month. Um, they brought in all the younger guys first and we did uh, a little kind of mini, you know, uh, prospect camp. And then we went to Traverse City, which is like a, uh, it's kind of a little, a little city in uh, Detroit or in Michigan there, sorry, near Detroit and um, played in a little prospect tournament. I think the Leafs were there, uh, the Blue Jackets, um, oh, uh, St. Louis Blues were there as well. So I think there was like four or five different, you know, prospect squads there. So that was a lot of fun. And then after that, I, uh, we all flew back to Dallas again and then main camp started. So that was interesting getting this off of me. Babelski and Miro Heiskanen and uh, Dennis Gurianov and obviously Sag and, you know, Jamie Benn, guys like that. So it was pretty sweet. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Uh, how was, how was it like, d d describe like main camp and the training camp and what was like, or the details and how, how did it really work? Was it just all on the ice for like, like two, three times a day or was it, more like strength and conditioning or getting to know the players and coaches? Um, it was a mix of everything. Um, usually we weren't on ice like uh, that much. Um, I mean, I'd probably say once to maybe twice a day. Like, I don't even think we skated, skated twice. Usually we'd have like, like two and a half hour like ice slots. So like you'd go on for like an hour and 50 and then take a break. You know, they'd flood the ice and you go back on for another hour and a bit or whatever. So... Uh, that's usually how it worked and then you'd have a workout after or something like that so um usually that's what our day consisted of was was on ice first and then we'd have a workout or a stretch or something after and then um you'd probably i don't know eat dinner or whatever and then kind of head back to your hotel relax for the rest of the day so yeah so that's that that's not that bad though yeah i know crazy because uh yeah it's it's hard like those guys are fast and they're bigger guys so it's uh it was a little bit hard to keep up at first like for us younger guys but once you kind of got into it you got used to that uh, pace yeah definitely yeah so i mean after all this the whole process and everything going back to the blazers was that kind of like instant credibility in the league and everything everybody's like wow you got to go through that and like uh how, how was your training process after that like you know you got all that motivation Got to see how it's like as a Dallas star kind of so how'd that go for you uh yeah so uh once I came back to uh Kamloops um I mean uh, I knew we were gonna have a pretty solid team this year I didn't think we'd go you know super super far in playoffs which we ended up you know being one one win away from the WHL championship we lost to Seattle in game seven so um that was a uh, pretty disappointing but uh the overall year was a lot of fun you know we got some good some good young players that are probably going to get drafted, uh, you know, in this year's draft. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what teams take them. Yeah, you also have uh, Rangers prospect in net, uh, Dylan Garand. Uh, I know he's yeah. he's been really good um, for you guys. And he gives some other draft picks, but honestly not too many. And uh, I've been following the WHL the entire year. And I knew you guys would be good, but I didn't I just like you said, I didn't know you guys would be that would be this good. Um so like what do you think uh was the key to why you guys were so successful? Um well I think having uh a well rounded team, obviously with Dylan and that uh he's the best goaltender in the country and played world juniors too. He's the starter. So um uh, I think uh to to go far in playoffs you gotta have a good goaltender. So I think it started with him and then um you know, having uh, some really skilled defensemen as well that could uh, kind of contribute offensively. And then um, I think we had a pretty deep team. Like our all, all four lines, especially the top three lines, were really good. So, um, I mean, any line could contribute at any given moment. Yeah, definitely. That's that. That's definitely uh, how most teams uh, can definitely compete for championships. So we see that in the NHL right now with young teams like the Rangers, uh, who I'm a big fan of. Like they have four lines deep of guys that can contribute in any way. Oh yeah, and yeah, uh, it's pretty special to see how it's like you get. There's a line of guys that are under 21 or something like that, or under 22, 
and they're putting up so many points against like Stamkos and Kucherov and the Hurricanes and Penguins and I guess it's just you have you have four lines deep uh you can pretty much score at will basically and that's kind of what the Rangers have been doing yeah no they've impressed me in this playoffs too they got uh they've got a pretty good run going here so um two on up on the the bolts there I think uh I think they have a pretty good shot at making the Stanley Cup finals yeah I mean I'll I'll be shocked I have them getting out of the first round even as a Really, really a diehard Rangers fan. I didn't think they'd even beat the Penguins. I, I, I said Penguins in seven. Yeah, so. I, I didn't think they were gonna get past Pittsburgh there too. But uh, I mean, down three one, they came all the way back. So it's impressive. Yeah, and even in the Hurricanes, down I think three two. So yeah, there, were, there was many elimination games for them. Yeah, no, it's uh, pretty cool to see. Yeah, Max. Yeah, um, so obviously signing your ELC has got to be huge. Um, when you're able to do that, was that kind of something that the team approached you with, or is it more like something your agent was with you about? Um, it's something the team and their coach, or I guess their staff behind the scenes kind of approached my uh, agent and my advisors kind of uh, up front and just uh, they obviously worked together to figure out a deal. And um, I didn't really hear anything. Like I wasn't really involved and. And, you know how much money or you know what i was going to get for a contract so uh, obviously my agent and uh, you know they do a good job at uh you know figuring out a contract and making sure that it works for both sides of the table so um you know once i got that uh, phone call from my agent kind of you know telling me that uh hey we're working on a contract i was i was you know pretty excited and pretty pumped because um you know it's it's one thing to be drafted but to, to be signed by the team and and be under a contract it's huge yeah that also opens up like the AHL route for next year possibly yeah totally so yeah um and I guess just the last question we have today is where do you see yourself um in the next couple of years uh in your hockey career um I mean hopefully this year I want to be able to play with Dallas um even if it's limited ice time just being able to to stay in the NHL and uh I mean obviously it's a bonus getting paid NHL salary I mean that would be that'd be a treat so um if I could stay at that level that'd be great if not then I'll be back with Kamloops and uh, we get to host the Memorial Cup next year so uh lots to look forward to next season yeah win-win yeah. win -win situation pardon me win-win situation yeah, exactly. There's uh, nothing to complain about. So just uh, putting good, putting uh, a good, uh, good, good work this summer, and then uh, get ready for training camp, and uh, hopefully have a good year. Yeah, totally. Um, so that's gonna do it for us, uh, Logan. Thank you so much for the interview. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Robin. Yeah. Good luck next year. Thank you. Take care, guys. Good luck. Um, and as always, uh, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Um, and our next guest will be USHL forward Nicholas Moldenhauer.